You probably haven't assembled too many of these pieces of furniture from Ikea, Wayfair, or Amazon without running into a common piece of hardware like these cam screws and the associated cam nuts. Now in a perfect world, these work well. It can easily hold together two pieces with a simple 180 degree rotation of the nut and that'll lock those together and you can easily start to build up your furniture from pieces of flat stock. The problem comes in when you start to tighten down things like the cam screw and you can't get it to tighten. The hole starts to strip out and this can be a really common problem. And why is that? Because most of the pieces are either MDF like this one or particle board like the one on the left, which are not very forgiving to over tightening. And you can even result in blowouts such as this one. So before you chuck that piece of furniture into the garbage, give me just a couple minutes and I'll show you three different steps, starting off with the easiest and then progressing up to that blowout that we saw where you really have a lot of damage. I'll show you how to reestablish the integrity and the structure of the MDF or particle board so you can get the cam screw to actually seat and hold securely. All you need is a couple of tools and a little patience, so let's jump into number one. So for our first example, overall we just have a stripped out hole where we cannot tighten down the cam screw. Overall the hole's still in pretty good shape, so we just need a little more material in there so that the screw will hold long term and it won't impact the durability of the piece of furniture. So first up you'll want to clean out the hole, maybe blow some air through it, just so you don't have any sawdust hanging out in there. And you might have seen this trick before on like door hinges or a strike plate on the door, but instead of being able to just insert in toothpicks like this, snap those off flush and then put the screw in, because your cam screws are a little bit different and they're not a standard wood screw, that's just not gonna really cut it. But we will still use toothpicks or any other scrap of wood and cut off small slivers. So it might not seem like much, but actually I don't need much. So what I want to do is put the slivers in and if the slivers have a tail on them that curls, you'd want to curl it out away from the hole to allow the cam screw to actually seat within the hole. So I'm just going to line the perimeter here of the hole with small slivers. And then with some standard wood glue, I'm just going to give a couple drops inside that hole. All right, so now that we have our slivers and our wood glue, I'm going to reintroduce the cam screw. And I want to start getting it threaded by hand and then come in with the Phillips head and gently thread that into the hole. Now most of that wood glue should push down into the hole but if some comes out, no problem, we'll clean it up later on. Now I want to get it flush with the surface, but I do not want to over tighten it. I have a better hold right now, but the hold will actually come in 24 hours when that wood glue completely sets up, and then that will securely hold a cam screw within this piece of wood and give it the strength we need. So I'll take my fastback and I'll just trim off those slivers. And then I'll just wipe off any of the excess glue prior to letting it sit for 24 hours. So there is method one. This is gonna work well for when you still have a pretty solid hole but it's just stripped out. And I would let this sit for 24 hours as called out on the wood glue prior to assembling it back in the furniture to make sure it is strong and ready to go. Now for example two, you'll remember it basically will pull right out of the hole. So the cam screw is not grabbing on anything that the threads are not able to grab onto any of the MDF. So what we'll use is dowel rods. Varying different size out there, you can get them at any home improvement store. You just want to match up the dowel rod. I want to oversize it. So I want to go substantially over the diameter of the threads for the cam screw so that I'll have new material to drill a pilot hole into. So I'll be using two different drill bits. One is a 3 8 that's sized to that dowel rod. 
So I'll need to bore out that hole to three eighths and I'll do it at the depth that's a little bit more than the threads. So I don't go too far down, but I make sure that I have the depth that I need. And I'll just mark that with some simple painter's tape on each of the drill bits. Then I'll reference a good hole to know the actual hole diameter that the threads will lock into, and that is a 3 16 for this example. So we'll take that 3 8 drill bit and take your time. You don't want to go too deep. You just want to bore out that hole and not cause any additional damage. And then I'll take a little bit of the tight bond wood glue, put it on the sides and then the bottom, but really more importantly, get a nice coating all the way around that doll that's going to be set into that hole. And now you'll either press it into place or with a light tap from a hammer, get that doll fully seated into the hole. And then once it is, we'll clean off that excess glue to make sure our surface doesn't have any glue that's going to dry on it. And now you need to let it sit for 24 hours to get a secure hole. But luckily, I've already done it with this example. Now I'll take some blue painter's tape and I just want to protect the surface as I cut off that doll rod to not create any more damage. So now we have the piece secured to the table with a clamp and all I'm going to do is use a simple saw from a miter box. I don't have any fancy flush cut saws or all the Japanese hand tools that are out there now you see. I just have this guy. Uh, it was about 20 bucks. I use it for a lot of different trim projects. And if you do want to ever reference what tools I'm using, like this saw, like the utility knife from Milwaukee, I always keep those updated. So no matter when you're watching this, you can go on our Amazon storefront and you'll see all these tools, including all the power tools, the tool belt I use, the Milwaukee packout system that I store all my tools in. And that'll just give you a quick reference in case you're needing a specific tool for a job or you're just looking to expand your tools so you can do more jobs around the house. So let's cut off this little dowel and get sanded down so then we can set a new pilot hole for the cam screw. So there's the finished product and that's what we'll be setting our pilot hole in and also it is a flush surface so if this was sitting on another piece from your furniture kit you would not have any issues with a flush surface from that dowel sticking out. So now we'll just mark the center point. That's where we'll be setting our 3 16 hole and don't forget it's very important to get the hole in exactly the right spot there is not a lot of wiggle room when you're setting these cam screws in place because they need to perfectly align with the other piece of furniture where the cam nut is going to be set and then that's going to secure on to the cam screw i'm going to drill a small pilot hole with a 1 8 drill bit just to do this in two parts so i don't damage that new doll Then we'll go ahead and set our cam screw in place, making sure it's perfectly aligned. And I'll use the Phillips head, even though a lot of this damage was caused with using a drill or impact driver, it is good to just use a screwdriver so you can really feel when things are tightening up and avoid that damage in the first place. That has actually a really great hold on it. And now we have a cam screw that is secure and ready for assembly. Well, let's take a look at that final example where we had the big blowout. So here's what we're working with. These examples usually happen after the furniture has been used and you side load that cam screw enough where it it completely blows out the material and then you have a lot more damage than example one or example two. First step is we need to clean off all this loose material and get down to solid MDF or solid particle board. We'll just use a utility knife for that and then clean all that off and then I'll show you how to reestablish a surface which will hold that cam screw. Okay. 
So once we get all the loose MDF, loose material, separate away, and I know this looks much worse, but it does need to get a little bit worse before it gets better in this case. And you want to get anything that's bubbled up, you want to get cut away because that just is an indication of loose material. So here is the center point, and remember it's critical that we keep exact location of the original hole. So what I'm going to do is I will mark that center point because we're going to add some material to the surface, but I do not want to lose the reference to where that hole should be. Basically, I just want to set up some crosshairs that I can reference after laying down some new material. So once you have that in place, what we're going to use is some JB Weld. I've had good luck with JB Weld products over the years, and this is a quick wood. It's specifically made for projects such as this on wood or MDF or particle board. It has a setup time for 15 or 20 minutes, so harden after 15 or 20 minutes, and then a cure time for one hour where you could sand that back down and then reset your cam screw. You can see there's two actual materials that you'll be mixing together and that's what's gonna actually activate this. So we'll cut off a section to fill this hole and we really don't need much. And then don't forget to put that cap back on it so it won't harden for future projects. And then you can keep that in your toolbox or out in your garage so you always have it handy. So then it is good to use some gloves while you mix this together. And then you'll just take that outer plastic coating off, set that aside, and then you'll mix this together until you get a consistent and uniform color. Okay, so once you get the consistent and uniform color, you know it's completely mixed. Now you can start applying that here to the damaged area. Now I do want to make sure I get some down in that hole, so I will roll this out a bit to the diameter of that hole. And then just using a toothpick, I'll kind of cut that off, working it down into the hole. It's very easy just to press this on top of the surface and not get it all the way down in the hole. So keep working that in. You don't want too much excess material because that is just going to be more sanding that you need to do later on. So I'll kind of roll it out with a toothpick. And now once we get it close, I am going to set in my cam screw because I want this to be in place while the actual quick wood, wood sets up. And that is where those crosshairs are going to come in handy. So referencing those crosshairs. Then I'll slowly thread that back into the hole. And then once the cam screw is where you want it, you'll press the quick wood back up against that cam screw. You just want to keep referencing, making sure that cam screw is flush. So that when everything sets up, your depth is set correctly. So that looks good. Another hack is you can use a Ziploc bag. Because this is a little sticky, a Ziploc bag just gives you a little bit of an interface where you can press down and work the quick wood back down, giving a smoother surface without getting it on your fingers and you're not wearing any bulky gloves.
All right, so that is what we'll let set up. And you can see we have a little bit of extra material that we'll need to work off of that later on. But this is what we want to set up. And it's very important, again, that you push the quick wood back down to make sure it's securely held around your cam screw. And then also, before you let it set up, make sure you're checking both directions that you're happy with the orientation of that set screw because once it dries, it's going to be set in that position. So I've already had another example setting up for a couple hours. Now here, what I'm going to use is that Dremel tool, and I do want to smooth out the surface to make sure even though the cam screw is securely held in there, and will work. I need to make sure the surface, especially if another piece of wood is going to set against this, this needs to be smoothed down a little bit. So you can do that with sandpaper or a Dremel tool. So here is the finished product. And this one, because it had the most damage, you're gonna need some touch-up paint, especially if these are surfaces that are showing. And it's not pretty, but it's effective. You have a smooth surface, so your other piece of wood could come on top of that. And you have a securely held screw that is positioned correctly. So hopefully option one, two, or three will work for your failure mode and get you back on track. Assembling furniture is frustrating enough, and, and if you have a failure like this, I get it. So hopefully that helps you out, but let me know down in the comments which one worked for you. But now that you got momentum and you're fixing things around the house, check out this video right here with some simple peel and stick tiles. You can waterproof your kitchen sink base or your bathroom vanity to prevent water damage in the future. So thanks for joining us on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.